Hello and welcome to the role of customer, partner and vendor collaboration in enterprise open source strategy. My name is Jose Miguel Barrela. I am with the open source ecosystem team at Microsoft. And over the next half an hour, I'd like to share with you how Microsoft's approach to collaboration and partnerships has transformed with open source and some of our learnings along the way, hoping that uh, it can help you and your program engage with your value chain and the open source community at large. I have been working with open source at Microsoft for over a decade. I've had the opportunity to contribute to many of the milestones that you see here. Some of these are product related. Some of these were announcements that signal more strategic investments. Some were contributions to third party projects and others involved releasing of Microsoft's IP as open source. But these, these are all representative of Microsoft's open source transformation, where today over 30,000 employees use GitHub for work and over 150,000 open source components are used to deliver value to customers and people around the globe in millions of different ways. But something that particularly struck me when I joined Microsoft was the power of partnerships. It was clear to me that partners were going to play a critical role in Microsoft's open source journey, that Microsoft wasn't going to do this alone and was willing to stand on the shoulders of giants. Now, this meant changing many things, how we engage with partners and even who we engage with. Uh, one of the most important examples of this today remains how we work with open source foundations and other governance bodies. This represents a shift from work that used to focus mostly on standards and it requires developing a mindset, a skill set and a cultural affinity that spans the large and growing numbers of organizations that influence several aspects of Microsoft business today. Now, this is important work that we continue doing. You can visit opensource.microsoft.com if you want to learn more, but I thought I'd describe some specific collaboration models that we're seeing more of today. For example, cross-industry collaboration, where we see a group of somehow unlikely partners are increasingly happening, powered by open source. Examples range from tackling problems like separation of concerns in cloud native application model, like what we do with Alibaba and others in open application model, or consortiums like Confidential Computing Consortium that brings together from hardware vendors to cloud providers and end users as well. Now, this cross-industry collaboration is also seen at a more granular level in certain technology ecosystems. I could mentioned perhaps Onyx Runtime in the machine learning space, uh, or Yarn in the Apache Software Foundation analytics space, or our partnership with OpenAI. The reality is that the harder the problem and the more impact it has in both society and people, the more often it seems like open source is helping bring participants together across industries. Two examples here include differential privacy, OpenDP in particular, uh, open data, uh, through not only this open data initiative, but also several other uh, work that Microsoft has been doing around licensing uh, for data sets um, uh, through open source uh, licenses that are on GitHub. There's also uh, healthcare, environmental sustainability, and we participate in several of this directly as Microsoft as well as through GitHub. If I had to pick uh, one such challenge from the top of my head, I would say that be our joint responsibility to secure the open source software supply chain. It's something that no single company, no single provider, no single Linux distro, no single foundation or project can tackle alone. And when it comes to identifying threats, rethinking disclosure and developing security tooling and best practices, the Open Source Security Foundation reflects this cross industry collaboration with participants that include JP Morgan Chase, for example. Now, in addition to actively participating in governance forums like the Linux Foundation or the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, coinciding with industry peers in certain contribution spaces like YARN, and engaging in cross-industry collaboration for broad impact problems like differential privacy, I'd like to talk a little bit more about our work with commercial partners because it best reflects the open source transformation at Microsoft highlights the different mindset that this type of partnership requires. Now, SONIC stands for Software for Open Networking in the Cloud. It's an open source project released by Microsoft in 2015. It comprises code base as well as specs. Um, it was originally designed to help with 
uh, cloud service provider software defined networking needs in the cloud. Every packet that comes in or out of a Microsoft data center today goes through a top of rack switch running Sonic. And it has a modularity that allows uh, different uh, partners to plug their hardware offerings. As a result, there are about 100 uh, supported platforms in Sonic from a dozen different vendors. And some of the things that we've been doing with Sonic include the fact that GitHub issues and pull requests are the place where the development of the project happens in the open with contributions from many people that are not Microsoft employees. Also something else that we've done with Sonic uh, was the uh, give everyone the chance to grow the Sonic brand by establishing a quality bar, uh, both in technical as well as in general end user experience standpoint uh, on what really makes a great Sonic derivative or a Sonic distribution uh, a great customer experience. So as you can see, this type of collaboration, this partner industry collaboration, not only creates opportunities for a lot of the hardware vendors that can use Sonic to go to market, and today there are Sonic distributions out there as commercial offerings from uh, several of these partners, but it also requires a different approach, a different mindset, a different uh, thinking about governance, uh, and it's still a long-term investment. It still uh, requires every single bit of help and, and time and resource investment as any other kind of project, but it has an interesting commercial implication that again is a reflection on the transformation on how this type of collaborations are happening. Now, one other uh, collaboration uh, I'd like to highlight is how we work with partners to build solutions in Azure, to build things in our platform. It's not about keeping an arm's length from a lot of these different collaboration forums, but in many cases, like with the commercial open source companies that you see here, is that joint engineering, joint operations, and joint support that materializes in different ways depending on the nature of the service, but results in an integrated experience for customers with integrated identity, integrated security, and integrated billing, is well, what we really call uh, jointly built. These are solutions you can buy from the Microsoft price list. These are joint SKUs, joint solutions, joint go-to-market, uh, joint services. Uh, in the case, for example, of Azure Red Hat OpenShift, not only has Red Hat productized OpenShift, which is an open source project, but Microsoft and Red Hat have open sourced the control plane of the service, which is the Azure Red Hat OpenShift resource provider, or ROP, open sourced on GitHub today. And these are all great examples of um, how we can partner that cultural affinity between Microsoft and the commercial partners, the commercial open source partners, can translate benefits for the open source ecosystem because all of these companies uh, handle communities, handle their project, and that they understand upstream and downstream project and product. And whether it's innovation or simply fixing experience, you know, patching security issues or whatnot, we're one more participant that knows and is in at, in the long term to bring all of this uh, learnings from going into production and going into market back to the uh, open source projects. Now, one more example I'd like to uh, provide on a particular type of community industry collaboration comes from our Postgres team. There is a, uh, a significant Postgres investment at Microsoft. We have several core contributors to the Postgres uh, project uh, working at Microsoft. And we offer a managed Postgres service. Uh, it is uh, uh, every extension, every contribution we've made is open source. And uh, we continue innovating in this space with things like PJ Cron, which basically helps with um, uh, scheduling background workers in Postgres scenarios in a more idiomatic or better integrated way. In the case with PJ Cron, which again is an open source collaboration, is that it was not just the brainchild of Microsoft, it was actually the collaboration between Microsoft, Amazon, a competitor that offers also offers a managed Postgres service, and Zalando, a retailer, a customer that uses Postgres. And it's this type of collaboration that we also see in some of the scenarios that I described, like uh, Onyx Runtime or in the Cloud Native Computing Foundation space, where uh, more and more we coincide with uh, others, oftentimes, competitors, other industry participants, industry peers, 
uh, end customers that are um, doing this contribution in the open, which is quite amazing. And again, another example of the type of collaborative flavors of collaboration that we are uh, often finding. Again, a lot of this uh, is not only commercial, it's not only about creating opportunities, which we still do, uh, it's not just about being an active participant in the governance bodies of, of, of things that influence you know, the business interests of Microsoft or of your company, uh, but it's also tackling big problems uh, and coming together to offer solutions that customers and the community at large really want, like in this case, um, this particular Postgres extension. If I had to paint a little bit of a framework, I would say that working together in open source starts with collaborating with the industry, starts with being present in all the governance bodies, it involves the building of our platform uh, with others. Oftentimes, that means you know bringing publishers into our marketplace, establishing you know, you know partner relationships, partner programs, partner channels, but also going above and beyond and building with partners, which is something that we uniquely do uh, through this joint uh, engineering, joint operations, joint support, and the integrated experience, and that long-term commitment to go through the uh, upstream open source communities uh, through and with our partners. There are two uh, customer related uh, examples here that I have at the bottom, and I'd like to talk about one of these two uh, a little bit in depth. Of course, Microsoft does have, like many software companies, a consulting function. This is what I'm calling here coding for customers. In this consulting function, uh, because we work with enterprise uh, companies, these, you know, of course, uh, there's a lot of open source uh, usage, um, uh, whether it's Office, Dynamics, uh, front-end solutions around ASP.NET, .NET Core itself being open source, helper uh, solutions around SQL Server running on Linux, containerized solutions. These are all spaces where our traditional consulting customers keep asking for more and more open source. But I wanted to focus on coding with customers which is something at Microsoft that we do through our commercial software engineering uh, organization. And it's in this coding with customers where we see some reflection of uh, the motivations around uh, the broader collaboration, both with commercial and non-commercial entities. In this code with engagements, we're seeing ubiquitous open source usage that includes languages like Python and Go, Solutions like Kafka, oftentimes all of those running in Linux containers, pulling the OCI stack, pulling the Linux operating system. In these engagements, we use a standard legal framework that describes jointly owned IP with focus on reusability and respect for the open source licensing of anything that's brought into the engagement, which is the result of uh, joint decisions and joint discussions with uh, our customers. And like I said, it's something that we see very often. We find that we, we might be improving on a particular way of doing something, and that results in joint upstream contributions as well. And uh, a whole uh, motivation behind this is the ability for Microsoft to understand how open source is being used in different industries. Commercial software engineering engages in industry ranging from healthcare to public sector, uh, some of the customers we engage with include Alliance, AXA, UBS, HSBC. So that is critical for us, and we see the same thing that you see in terms of uh, open source underpinning a lot of trends around digital transformation, as well as you know entire categories of technology being particularly or basically defined by uh, open source. Now, one of the big learnings here is that long-term sustainability is as much as a concern in this type of code with engagements of you know vendor, in this case cloud service provider and end user, uh, as it is for any industry peers or any cross industry collaboration. No one really wants to be in the business of uh, you know rolling out code, no matter how good the code is, uh, no matter how helpful we think it might be for someone else and then failing to create a community or failing to care about its long-term sustainability. So this is an aspect uh, we've learned from, uh, particularly in the early stages of our work here with some um, Kubernetes and cloud native related projects um, around best practice frameworks, for example, where uh, the it's always hard to start this engagement thinking, how do I decouple this? How do I design this? 
uh, in a way that uh, others can naturally come, that it naturally attracts contributors and future maintainers. That requires understanding, you having some product understanding, what's going to be the value proposition, uh, who's going to be the audience of this project, of, of this repo that I'm going to be standing up. And of course, much more than that, what's the governance of this, uh, what infrastructure is going to be necessary, uh, and, and oftentimes also requires um, you know, recruiting some critical base. Do we want to talk to others in our same industry? In the case, for example, let's say uh, banks, you know, are there other banks, are there other peers I can talk to and see if there's any, uh, you know, cross, uh, sorry, industry peer collaboration we can put together around this, uh, this project. Now, interestingly, some of this uh, comes from perhaps underestimating non-code artifacts. When we focus mostly on code, then this concern is, is almost brings everything to a stall. It's a, it's a real blocker. When we consider non-code artifacts like specs, like architectures and other type of um, deliverables, then things get a little bit interesting because we can make meaningful open source contributions, even though it's not necessarily a software framework or you know, something that resembles a software product. Uh, so this is an area we want to explore more uh, more on. In fact, uh, I would say that the internal training at Microsoft that we have for all of this organization that performs the code with engagement, internally we call this open hack, this is actually open source. So the entire training materials for all of this type of engagements are open source already. As you know, at, at Microsoft, like it's a uh, normal in, in the cloud, all documentation, SDKs, client libraries, et cetera, are also open source. But there are so many artifacts that, you know, don't require necessarily that, um, you know, that cognitive aspect of you need to buy into this framework or this particular piece of technology, which can be a little bit of a limiting um, factor when considering adoption of a lot of this. So this is an interesting uh, finding for us that, uh, you know, how even in this type of engagements, which are, um, you know, there's, there's, it's our, these are non-billable, non-billable type of engagements, non-prescriptive type of, of, of engagements. We find many of the same motivations and, and challenges that drive this cross-industry collaboration of, of which we have many examples that I've talked about today. We find that long-term sustainability remains a, a big topic. We find that that cross uh, talking to industry peers is an aspect that could potentially help here. That that matchmaking across industries is also another aspect that could help here. And certainly there are forums like this forum uh, where we can uh, talk about several of these problems and find common ground. And this is something uh, we truly believe there's more investment and more that we can be doing in this space. In fact, I am very interested in your learnings uh, working with others in open source, particularly working with others in your value chain, and particularly working with the uh, ecosystem and the community at large. Uh, we are seeing again an increase, like you are uh, here today, we're seeing an increase of end user participation in several of those governance bodies um, and trying to understand what else can we do as trusted advisors and uh, cloud service providers and software companies to ensure the maximum impact and the maximum value for the open source community at large? To summarize, here are five of the models that I've talked about today in terms of collaboration with others in open source, that collaboration with industry and active participation in governance, the development of you know the basic partner ecosystems to build our platform, but also going uh, with commercial open source uh, software companies, building with them services in our platform that then allow us to deliver more value to the open source ecosystem. And uh, obviously working with customers, including that coding with motion for us that has yielded some interesting learnings into uh, reusability and what, um, you know, what role, uh, what things must be considered beyond just licenses and technical other technical factors and the code itself to ensure that these are successful and impactful contributions for everyone else as well. Like I said, I'm really interested in your input. I'm more than happy uh, to get in touch via open source at Microsoft.com. We'll also open it up for a few questions in just a minute. If you'd like to learn more about 
how we do open source at Microsoft and the kind of things we do with open source at Microsoft, you can visit opensource.microsoft.com. I'm particularly interested in any follow-up conversations you want to have with your team, uh, with others in your industry. I'd be uh, delighted to share a little bit more details about some of these engagements. But for now, let's open it up for a few questions. And again, thank you for uh, making the time and enjoy the rest of the forum.